in the last stream we were working on finally setting up the automation for the fourth tier of research that being this purple utility research with these four researchers all upgraded of course with the tier two energy upgrades and since the end of the last stream we have managed to acquire 56 utility research which is more than enough for us to work on what i want to work on in today's episode and that of course is unlocking the crusher to take our current 10x ore processing system and supercharge it into a 35x ore processing system it's going to be expensive we need 32 utility research and of course i do need to first tick this box here we'll hand that in we need 12 lots of 8x production which we do have we'll hand that in we need 16 lots of 64x mechanics which we actually don't have and then finally we need 32 lots of 64x which we do have i'm gonna put that back real quick though because between streams i did accidentally take out yet more logistics research you'll see we got 69 here and so real quick what i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna like disconnect this i don't want to waste any of our resources where i don't have to and so i'm going to take the 564x that we have there i'm going to take those out as well and then we'll put the cable bank to give our system access to this again and then we just need to get the remaining 27 and once we have 32 of the logistics research we can go ahead and hand that in so mechanics research is going to be a problem there the other thing that i did want to unlock was the tier 2 infinity drill this also requires 16x of 64 mechanics so the trouble with mechanics that we're currently running into is a problem of steel and our steel production just isn't fast enough at the moment you'll see right now that the iron ingot is being uh, smelted into steel but it is somewhat slow and so we do have a lot of steel available we could uh, take some of this steel i guess and use that over here i'm pretty sure it's uh, steel gears that we're light on and to be fair i don't even need to do this i can just put the steel into one of these drawers and that steel will then get used to make more mechanics research another thing that we could do is just speed up the rate at which we're making steel which is probably what we should do for that we're going to have to go over to the materials quest line and unlock faster steel that needs 16 x8 which is completely fine let's hand that in as well as 16 just regular mechanics research which is also completely fine this unlocks for us the blast furnace preheaters these are made very easily with iron sheet metal and external heaters we will make i guess six of these so that we can put two onto each of our blast furnaces we do have some iron sheet metal but i'm going to assume probably not enough to make six of these we actually have a surprisingly close amount to making six which is uh, is more than i thought we'd have and uh, with a quick craft there we do actually have it perfect so these can go down like this on the side of the blast furnaces you do want to make sure they face uh, inwards towards the blast furnace i think you can probably rotate these with the engineer's hammer however i'm currently uh, fresh out of engineer's hammers so i'm just gonna make sure they go down right the first time and these do require power in order to work and i can't put this one here because of the fact that we've somewhat jankily put this cable here if we do that i guess what we can do is we can do this because now we're probably just going to go ahead and somewhat awkwardly use integrated dynamics to actually power this for that we need some energy exporters right now we only have the one energy interface but last episode we did make enough of these energy batteries to uh, to get quite a lot of energy interfaces and of course with those energy interfaces we can now make these energy exporters and that is going to allow us to hopefully power all six of these guys they don't require that much power to be fair it's 30 redstone flux per tick per connector and so what i might actually do i know i've just made six of these energy exporters those are not going to go to waste we can use those in the future but um i think what i might do is use the exporter for this one but then i'll probably use some of the lv wire connectors and insulated lv wires that we got last episode when we renovated this area and basically just use the current water wheels we have to power this because we are probably producing enough power now to just run all of these with these connections and each connection only takes 30 redstone flux per tick which is really not too much and there's also to the best of my knowledge at least no way to like upgrade these to use even more power so i think that this is going to be completely fine so long as you cannot attach a wire to the same point can i not oh there we go i was gonna say can i do this and this i totally can nice so these are getting power and hopefully our steel is gonna be faster whether or not it's gonna be fast enough is a different question i think we're still going to be kind of net negative on steel i think we're still using or trying to use way more steel 
with this setup than we're producing. The solution to that would just be to build more blast furnaces, which we could definitely do over here. We could probably build like another three on this side of the uh, Ultimate and Engineer's workbench. That would be fine. Again, we could move some of the steel over, but I'm worried that then we might not have enough steel to make all of the crushers that we're going to need uh, in order to actually set this all processing up. Speaking of the crushers, over here between streams, I have done a little bit of work moving the boiler. So previously, of course, we had our boiler here and we had our dynamos in front of it in a somewhat janky setup that did work, but didn't look the greatest. Between streams, I've kind of duplicated the size of this platform over here. Uh, there's still some work to do. I need to set up another uh, little staircase so I can easily get down and up. But over here, we now have the exact same 5x5x5 five by five by five boiler, but I've tidied things up a little bit and made it look a little bit nicer. So now, instead of having these cables here, just kind of out in the open, and instead of having these uh, high-pressure inputs also out in the open, I've moved those underground, so we have the steam coming out of the back of the boiler, that goes underground, and then we've got all of our high-pressure outputs underneath all 10 of the dynamos, and then I've just gone ahead and made a few more of these omnidirectional connectors, connected those all up so that we don't have to have one long janky cable running everywhere, and I've also done the same thing down here as well. Instead of using the NDIO item conduit, I've just got yet another omnidirectional connector with an item exporter, and in here we have a card that is set to cold cook, and so that's just pulling the cold cook from the other end of the base round and into that boiler. And yeah, I think this looks a lot nicer. And my thought process here is that we can duplicate this a few more times. We could probably put, you know, three boilers on this platform if needs be, uh, giving us potentially up to 30,000 redstone flux per tick of power generation that we could use around the base. And of course, all of that was done to give us more space here to put down all of our crushers. So that's the plan. The question is how long is it gonna take here? We are up to 15 out of the 16 mechanics research, so we're pretty close. Let me do a quick calculation. We need 16 times 64, so we need 1,024. We've got 968, so we are pretty close. I guess what I should probably do is, while we wait for this, I think I'm just gonna go ahead and quickly double up on blast furnaces over here so that we can give this time to do its thing, but also we can uh, you know, improve our steel production so that going forward, we uh, hopefully don't have to do so much waiting for steel. All right, so a little bit of time later, we now have three more fully kitted out blast furnaces with the new preheaters, and I've connected them up to the LV wire connection system. However, it turns out that we're not quite producing enough power for this. Uh, I guess it's 60 redstone flux per blast furnace, and we have six of those, that's 360 in total, which is more than we're producing with the water wheel here. So one thing we can do real quick is uh, if we take the Yeta wrench, we can right click here, to set this to input or output. I think that's input and I think that is output. So I think I'm gonna do something like this. Uh, if you click here, yeah, we can see that it's set to output, perfect. And so um, just for symmetry, I'm gonna do this and this, and then we'll connect from here to, I guess here, and then we're gonna connect from here to here. Nice, and that should bring more power to the system and should keep all of these chugging away. They are gaining power slowly but surely, which is perfect, and now more steel should be coming in, more steel should be being processed into mechanics research. Uh, again, for now, the only one that's not being used is this one. All three of these are set up to uh, send all their steel into mechanics research, uh, which is good. And uh, in the time it took me to do that, we have now got up to 16x64 mechanics research, so I'm gonna take all of that, and back over in here, we're gonna finally unlock the crusher. Nice. So we do get a capsule for that, which is very nice indeed, and we can use that capsule, of course, to figure out now uh, what we actually need to make the crusher. And my assumption is gonna be a fair amount of steel. We need one redstone engineering block, 10 light engineering blocks, six hoppers, six steel fence, and 10 steel scaffolding. That's honestly not too bad. Redstone engineering blocks, we've got in abundance over here. We've got so many of them. And in fact, I think we might have more than uh, what we need in the system. Yeah, we've got 31 in the system. Bearing in mind here, we need one, two, three, for five crushers, six if we wanted to set this one up, but for now I'm gonna set up five crushers here. And so we need five lots of whatever is uh, is in here. So five redstone engineering blocks, one, two, three, four, five. We then need, uh, let's do the hoppers next because those seem easy enough. We need 30 hoppers. Uh, right now I'm fairly certain that we have some hoppers in the system. Uh, and by that I mean in my inventory here. Uh, we don't have that many chests though, which is to be expected, but this recipe here does work quite well. And so real quick, we can just craft up 30 hoppers, 
Once we have those, we then need 50 light engineering blocks. These are going to be the slightly trickier bits here, because I don't know how many of these uh, iron mechanical components we have, and it looks like the answer is basically zero, which is not ideal. Uh, we can make more iron plates here using the uh, the old engineer's hammer, and uh, I think that's just going to be the best way for us to do that. We uh, obviously are going to use the engineer's work table to do this, and of course, being the fool that I am, uh, when I moved the engineer's work table, because I needed to make room for the new blast furnace, I once again broke it without taking the blueprint out first, and so, as per usual, I did once again lose that blueprint. Thankfully, it's not too difficult to make a new one. Boom and boom. We're going to need a lot more than uh, than 18, though, here, if we want this to, uh, to work. I'm not quite sure why that uh, craft failed, but um, if we need 50 of these, it's a one-to-one, -one, so we need 50 iron mechanical components to make that happen. Uh, what else do we need? We need 40 steel fence, which I think is doable, for that, we are going to need to make... Oh, wow, we got 60. Nice. Okay, I didn't think we had that many um, steel rods. That's completely fine, because then we also need steel scaffolding. Again, we need 50 steel scaffolding here. Thankfully, I think we actually do have enough steel to make this happen. Steel scaffolding. Uh, this one doesn't require any plates, which is nice. And it does require a lot of these rods, though, which is, is really not too bad. You make them in sets of six, and so getting 50 steel scaffolding here is actually... Not going to be too difficult. Okay, cool. So, let us, I guess, quickly make another engineer's hammer, which does require more iron plates. I really need to get into the habit of making another engineer's hammer before my last one breaks, but we'll do that. Get rid of these, drop in the iron, get ourselves another stack, or two even, of iron plates here. Drop those, of course, with the copper into the engineer's workbench. Like so. That's 50. That's the perfect amount that we need on top of what we made earlier. And so that should be basically everything for the light engineering blocks. And there we go, 64 light engineering blocks. And so I think, oh, it's steel fence. Did I put the steel fence away? I did. We got 70 of them apparently, that's fine. I think that's everything for the crushers. So now over here, we can left click. Uh, well, first of all, we need to figure out how we're gonna do this. We're gonna have to move the starting drawers further back because we're no longer going straight into the induction smelter. We're going into the crusher and then into the induction smelter. And I also want to make sure here that we leave room in the future for the final kind of big piece of infrastructure that's going to allow us to upgrade our ore processing even further. And that is the, uh, the arc furnace. So the crusher, if we check the manual, is a five by three multi-block that does want to go down in a specific way. So I think it's under heavy engineering and then crusher. And if we hit uh, stop, this is the multi-block structure that we're building. You put the items in at the top, and the power goes in on this spot right here, and then uh, there's like a little orange dot on the left-hand side, and then the outputs come out at the front, and it's a question of whether or not we want those outputs to go directly into the induction smelter. I don't see a reason why not. Like, we could put a gap in between and have like a buffer draw, but I don't think that's necessary. The crusher has um, basically infinite storage inside of it, so it will hold a ton of, uh, of resources inside of its um, internal storage. And so what I might do, I'll get rid of this, and we'll move that down, like here. And then if we use the uh, the capsule here, we can left-click to fill it in, and then left-click to rotate it. Let me quickly check the manual, though, because I need to make sure I know which way this is going down. If we hit uh, play, it is... So we want the redstone engineering block on the right-hand side? Yes, okay. Boom, and boom. That is exactly what we want. And so now we're just gonna do that four more times. Boom, boom. We're missing six hoppers, apparently. I uh, I really thought I had enough hoppers. Wait, I made 30 hoppers and we need nine per. Uh, nine multiplied by five is not 30, it's 45. I'm not quite sure where I got my uh, numbers there from. Oh, I think it's because I had, I had hoppers in my inventory. So I had a few hoppers in my inventory, which is why I think it said six and not nine. Uh, but the answer is, is nine and not six. So we just need to get uh, 18 more here, I think, to get us two more crushes worth. We'll do you and this. But of course, to do that, we do need to get rid of uh, these first. Let's quickly shift right click with the old Rancherino. We will reset that back up to get the platinum going where it needs to go. But uh, boom, that's done. And now we have five crushes that do fit very snugly along this line here, ready to receive their ores that they're then going to process and eventually once it's processed through the whole chain we're going to get 35 times the amount of ingots as ores that we put in the question now chat is how 
much do we want to spend on making this look better? Because we could, I think, if we wanted to, run logic cable like along and to the crusher here, and that would work. But alternatively, I think what would look better is just having an energy exporter down like this with a cable and a directional connector like that. If we just did that on each one, I think that's going to look better than running the cable over every time. Between streams, what I did do uh, real quick is over here, I added a second compacting drawer to this setup. That way we can just drop popped chorus fruit in either the hopper or the fluid transposer in much the same way that we do with the mineral logs. And instead of getting the crystallized mineral chunks, we get crystallized chorus chunks. And uh, I've not done this, but I should put one of these here and then put down another item interface just so that we uh, actually have access to those chorus chunks. And as it turns out as well, you can use the zombie data model here to produce chorus fruit. And so we have fully backed up on slime balls to the point where the loot fabricator itself has also fully backed up on slime balls. And so if we want chorus fruit, we can just select it, take a snack and uh, throw it in a smelter somewhere. And then we can drop all of the uh, popped chorus fruit into the fluid transposer or the hopper. And that gets us a lot of these crystallized chorus chunks. And those are what we use mostly to make more of these omnidirectional connectors via the use of these logic directors. And so now that we have that automated and now that our system knows how to make the input and output transformers automatically, uh, between uh, episodes I did request a bunch of those. You'll see we've got 113 input variable transformers and 34 output variable transformers. The reason we have so many inputs is that I'm still getting uh, my head around the way this setup works. When you go to request a recipe, in my head, I'd say I want 20 of them next. That's not how it works though. It does 20 lots of the craft and because the craft makes four, you'll see on the right here, it actually makes 80 of them. So between episodes, I think I made like 40 batches or something of input variable transformers. And instead of making 40, it made, you know, 120, which is why we've got so many of them. But not that it really matters because it now makes it substantially easier for us to get more of these. We can just do this and we get loads of them, which is pretty nifty. You know, we've got nine of them now and that's gonna be more than enough for us to go ahead and just quickly connect all of these crushers up to power without having to run a bunch more of these uh, logic cables around the base. Of course, each one of these does need a variable card. Let's make sure each one gets it so that they can actually receive the power. And yeah, that's a much tidier setup than what I was otherwise going to do. And so now it's just a case of actually piping the items in. So I'm fairly certain what we can do here. Uh, let's start with copper because we've got loads of copper. I'll take this and we can put this drawer probably right about like here is what I'm thinking, like actually on the crusher like that for the time being, at least. Of course, eventually we'll move it back when we make room for the arc furnace back here. But I think we'll essentially put that there and then we can just use an item conduit, I'm pretty sure, to extract like that down into the crusher. So right now, if I set you to extract always active and set this to insert, we should see this start to spin and make a horrible sound. And if this is set to input on the left, it is gonna work. We have to take this out. It looks like it's not gonna work, which is annoying because of the fact that like, when this fills up, is it going to just start spewing shards out? If that is the case, which I think is quite likely, this does crush into the same thing, by the way, here in the induction smelter. The sound is horrendous, but um, if this spews, then we're gonna have a problem. Interesting. Okay, let me uh, turn this off temporarily. And uh, let's also grab a lever so that we can turn the crusher off as well. There we go, okay. So we can use redstone control here as a way of preventing this from being a problem, I think. And I'm pretty sure there might even be a way that we can use integrated dynamics to make this happen. If we can get an inventory reader, which I'm pretty sure is one of these guys here, it's not too expensive. It does require some more chests. Chests are easy enough. Let's do this and this. I'll make a few of these because we've got unlimited wood now. We might as well. Uh, the inventory reader is this guy. And this is going to allow us to get a variable card that has um, a read on what is inside of this system here. So um, if we do something like this, in here, what we should be able to do is see about how this works. We've got slots to, slots filled to, I think slots filled to is what, we, what we're after, right? Okay, so I think we can use inventory count here. Right now it says inventory count is one to one. That's the total number of these two items. So 62 plus, well, it was 63 plus 58 was one to one. You'll see that number has now gone down to 120. If we get that as a variable card, basically this card 
is a variable that is linked to the number of items in this induction smelter. What we can do is we can get a redstone writer. So in integrated dynamics, there are readers and writers. Readers are used to like read information and writers are used to like export information. So we want a redstone writer, which is this guy. Uh, again, pretty straightforward. We do need two blocks of redstone. Perfect. And boom. Actually, never mind. That's not going to work. What I was going to do is I was going to tell this to turn off when the inventory got to like more than 120 items. That would kind of work, but it, the reason it wouldn't work is that if we end up in a situation where we have 64 copper shards but zero slag, it's going to keep spewing the copper out, which is not what we want. The Twitch chat has pointed out, though, that if we change the top slot here to match the color of the copper slot, so this slot is purple, this slot is green, then this actually reads just from that slot. So in here now, it says copper shard, and it shows 52 items as being the count, which is correct. So what we want to do is we want to um, kind of redo that variable. So I'm going to go with inventory full, and I'm going to go like that. So we have a card here that is basically going to say if this inventory is full or not. And it's basically true or false. So then what we're going to do is over here, we're going to put down the redstone writer like that. Basically, what we're going to do over here, we are going to, uh, to set up a system that emits redstone uh, if the card here is true. For that, I think there's a few things we're going to have to do first. This will stop eventually, by the way, because this is not exporting anymore. Um, it's just working through the backlog of um, copper shards that are in there. I think what we're going to need to get is a variable storage, which is this guy. The variable store is super easy to make, and we need to connect that up to our system somewhere. I'll put it like here for now. Basically, if I put this in here, so now it gives access to this card. The Twitch chat is making a good point here that in inventory full is not going to work because basically... As soon as we go down to 63 shards, it's going to turn the crusher on and it's going to make 3.5 copper shards, which is not ideal. So what we're going to want to do here is going to get a little complex. But if we go to inventory count like this, that is currently 64, which is this number here. We're going to take that inventory count and we're going to put it in here in just a second. Inside of our portable logic programmer, we're going to type less than this one right here. And we're basically, uh, before that, actually, let me get a, an integer. So we're going to make a new variable card, integer let's say 60, done. And then let's go back up here to less than, and we're gonna say if the amount in here is less than 60, create this uh, true-false Boolean, right? And so basically this is now a, um, a true-false as to whether or not the number there is less than 60. We need to put both of the variables for that in this variable store so that the integrated dynamic system can check on the inventory count of that reader and check on this integer, right? Now, if I go and place that in here, right now it's set to false, which is, did I put those in the wrong way around? Never mind. sorry, I did that incorrectly. We want greater than here. So we want this, and basically we want to, uh, greater than, we want to say if this here, if the number in the chest is greater than 60, then emit a redstone signal. Before I did it the other way around, where it was going to emit a redstone signal when it went to less than 60, that's not correct. So this card is going to check this reader via that card in there, and it's going to say, hey, is there more than 60 in here? If there is, go ahead, turn it off, right? So that's going to send out the redstone signal, turn it off. If there isn't, then it's going to not emit a redstone signal, and it's going to turn it on. Right now, there's less than 60, so it's false. If we go ahead and turn this back on, it's going to work, it's going to produce, and... This now says true, and so should stop. Let me do a uh, strong power true. I don't think strong power true was required, but I think this is working. So we've got 62 there. The crusher has stopped despite the fact that we set it to input, and now this is processing. What I'm going to have to do to see if this works is I'm going to have to make another upgrade kit because we've actually just like fully maxed out all of the uh, the copper storage that we had. Uh, to do that, I'm also going to need to get another drawer here because we are fully out of storage drawers. Real quick, let's do this and get some upgrade templates. Uh, we can make these diamond now, I guess, if we want, and then we'll put that in like so. That should kick a lot of this back into gear, and we should see, hopefully, this number come down. But I think this is working. I think we have the reader that is going to read the inventory, once this gets to below 60, so once this hits 59, uh, we should then see this come online. It's going to come online until it uh, goes above 60, and then it's going to go offline again. And in theory, this should stop any spewing from happening. We're about to find out. This is going to take it down to 60. 
it should do one more. Oh, but the next match already came in, which is interesting. So I didn't hear the crusher go for it there. But uh, there might have been like there might be a buffer inside of this that's holding some amount of stuff. It might be able to hold one batch's worth in the output buffer before it ejects it. But uh, so it took it back up to 64 again. So I'm not quite sure why it was spewing before. Right now this seems to be working. Now let me take some of these out. And we should see, hopefully, the crusher come back online. So I think what's happened here is somewhat bizarrely, I think that the crusher, the way this works, I'm, I think, is that the redstone writer is doing its job. It's emitting redstone. You'll see when I take half out here, without the crusher turning on, it's emitting more. I think that's because there is a pretty big buffer inside of the crusher as to how much it can hold, right? The crusher can hold a lot of stuff in its internal storage. I think it's got an unlimited storage. But I think the redstone signal is stopping the crusher from emit from like spewing those items out. So the crusher will crush, but it will also like kind of auto eject if it's not receiving a redstone signal. Because right now, if I take this off, does it just start? I assume it just starts spewing again. It does. So we do need this in here, and this does work. The reason that we're not um, like turning it back on again is just that right now there's so much copper. There's so many copper shards inside of the internal buffer of the crusher that it doesn't matter. Although actually, maybe not. Like, or maybe it's just because we're doing so little. The processing bar at the top there is processing, and so it's doing something, but it's just not spinning. Either way, the uh, the good news chat is that this does work and so real quick what i'm going to do i'm going to go ahead and make four more of these redstone writers four more of these inventory readers and kind of duplicate this setup you know we'll set all these to purple and then uh, we'll get uh, the writers and readers on there and this is kind of one of those situations where we're going a little deeper into integrated dynamics you definitely don't have to kind of do this stuff you could have just put like a, a buffer drawer in and that would have done the trick as well but I, there is some pretty nifty stuff that you can do with integrated dynamics inside of like the, the logic programmer because there's so many functions that you have it does get a little you know computer programming for sure but um and like some of these i have no idea what, what any of these do i have no idea what the heck this is right uh, operation is not null which i'm sure but uh, there's a lot that you can do with integrated dynamics that makes it super powerful if you know how it works all right so all of this is now working we've got all of the inventory readers on all of our induction smelters we've got all of the uh, writers on all of the crushers over here, you can reuse the same variable card for the integer number. So this variable isn't going to change. It's all going to be 60, right? So the variable is always going to be 60. It's not actually a variable. It's kind of a static variable. And so um, you can reuse this multiple times. So each one of these variable cards was then combined with this one to make a new variable. And then those variables are used in the output. So here, this variable card uses variables 43 and 41. You'll see where it says variable ID 4341. ID 41 is our... 60 integer card so there you see 45 and 41 over here you'll see it is 40 and 41 so basically we took the integer card inside of here we did the greater than thing and essentially now the way it works is that we have this card here that is going to tell the redstone writer to emit a redstone signal when the number in each of the setups respective induction smelters goes over 60. so when this goes over 60 the question will stop when this goes over 60 the question will stop and that should hopefully prevent any spewage from happening and it looks like it's working quite well and um, we put down all of the item conduits so those are all extracting out into their respective crushes and so far no spewage everything is working as intended right now aluminum is uh, not set to export the reason for that is that uh, we currently have a decent amount of production research we've got uh, 235 we could obviously be making more uh, like a lot more we've got um, you know 280 mechanics and we used all of our mechanics at the start of the episode but i feel like we need the um, aluminum for kind of more important things and so right now i like being able to come over here and get the aluminum we only have 300 and some we had like 380 before it all got sucked into the crusher so we don't have that much aluminum ore and so for the time being we've not got that uh, set to make research but yeah this is all working and we now have a fully functioning 35x ore processing system there are a few changes we could make to this system if we wanted to to make it better. Obviously, the arc furnace eventually is going to allow us to triple the current setup. So instead of doing 35x, we would effectively get a 105x ore processing system if we included the arc furnace. Although we could make the initial 35x better because uh, we could add the tectonic initiator to the pulverizer and we could add the augment here. I don't know what it's called. It just says induction smelter. We could add this augment to the induction smelter. We can also make it better just on its own. I think right now, if I type in iron ore, there's like small benefits we could uh, look towards. Currently, we use rich slag and iron ore to make two iron clumps. We could use cinnabar and iron ore to make three iron clumps. So 
Um, if we did that, what would we get? We'd get 2x multiplied by 2.5x, which is 5x. And then right now we do 5x multiplied by 2 is 10, multiplied by 3.5 is 35. If we did 5 multiplied by 3, that would be 15 multiplied by 3.5, which would be 52.5. So we could get over 50x all processing if we can get Cinnabar automated. Cinnabar is made by enriching the rich slag that we're already making with jellied cryorothium. This is actually kind of doable. The jellied cryorothium is made in a similar way to the, the Zephyrium or whatever it's called, the stuff that we have over here, the Zephyrian aerothium. Basically, we take a dust and then we put it in the magma crucible. The jellied cryorothium is made by melting cryorothium dust and the cryothium dust is made from Snowball's Redstone and Blizz Powder. Blizz Powder, again, is another one of those things that we get from the Elemental Data Model. You'll see right now we've fully backed up on this, which is uh, is good, but that could change, of course, once we get the Infinity Miners actually up and running. The only thing we don't currently have that, I guess, or don't currently have the means to get would be Snowballs. But Snowballs we can get also from the same data model. Interesting. So it's actually very possible then. Is this self-aware yet? It is self-aware, so this is going to make a ton of... Uh, pristine matter it's possible that we could maybe redirect some of the pristine matter coming from this around to a different set of loot fabricators you know ideally two more loot fabricators to see about getting the jellied cryothium automated chat is right here that the problem with the cinnabar is that you do lose slag so with the uh, with the current setup we use the rich slag and uh, we're guaranteed to get slag back so we can just loop it around indefinitely with this system, we take a rich slag, we turn it into a cinnabar, and then over here, you'll see that uh, when we process it with an ore, there's only a 25% chance that we actually get the rich slag back. And so that means that like, we're going to lose three quarters of our slag over time. That might not be a problem because of how much slag we're producing over here. Like, I don't know what our current output is. All of these have got void upgrades on, so they're all just kind of deleting any excess slag. It's possible we might be making enough slag, even if we're not. There is ways of producing slag automatically. If we look at uh, the slag from Thermal Foundation, and by the way, these two are usable interchangeably. You can use both of them to make um, rich slag and cinnabar. The slag from Thermal Foundation can be made, I believe, using sand and I think it might be cobblestone here. So yes, this setup right here, we can take cobblestone and sand, run that through an induction smelter, and get out a 100% slag generation system. So even though it does lose slag, I think that's fine. Worst case scenario, we can set this up. Unlimited cobblestone is super easy. We have an unlimited cobblestone generator in the form of this one from Nucleocraft. And then unlimited sand is also makeable from that unlimited cobblestone. And so getting unlimited slag is fine. So I do think it is probably worth doing here and is going to help push us to that 50x ore processing that I think is going to be good. So what I'm going to do real quick, I'm just going to move this setup. I'm going to move the... Um, the gas data model and the uh, the glowstone draw probably like over to this side of the base. Basically, I'm just going to take you out of here, put it in over here. And of course, we want to make sure we do something like this as well. And then we'll take, uh, I'm just going to take the whole draw here and move it over to this side. And we'll move that draw over as well. Put you there, get the wrench, rotate that to face the front just for the aesthetic purpose because we don't really use the draw all that much. And then over here, I'm going to do like the same thing we've done here. I'm going to get a second uh, loot fabricator. So we'll go ahead and break this. Move that over. And I'm just going to duplicate this setup here on this side. And we could make another elemental data model, but I don't know if we need to. I think, you know what? I'm going to do it. I'm going to make another thermal elemental data model. I was initially thinking I could just tap into this one and like drag it along over to here, which I think we could do. But I'm a little concerned that once we actually start using the two tiers of infinity miner that we're going to want all of the um pristine matter we can get for these uh, blitz rods and niter so i'll make another one i'll put it in over here we'll set up the same kind of system with the magma crucibles and the sequential fabricators and we'll see if we can't automate the production of that jellied cryothium okay so we've replicated basically this setup identically we have the blizz rods being pulled down pulverized into blizz powder and also snowballs as a byproduct over here we have snowballs being made by these and these. Um, I have made another elemental data model to keep it going, uh, but I did also steal some of the uh, pristine matter here and uh, use that to kind of kickstart this system like that. And so all of that gets combined in here. We've got the same uh, old system for exporting redstone via the red channel to the sequential fabricator. The cryothium dust is made. And then down here, 
it is then processed into Jelly Cryothium. So uh, we could do with a upgrade to a lot of these machines, and it also looks like the power is not ideal here. Again, that's almost certainly a problem with our old friend that's down here somewhere. I can't actually remember where the center of the platform used to be, but uh, around here there is a um, a big old multi-block structure that it might even be further forward actually now that I think about it. Yeah, it's over here. So this is where our guy is, and he is completely out of power, which is not ideal. I think I did connect this up. Let me go check them. I'm fairly certain, if I'm not mistaken, that I, I think that I did reconnect this up to power? Yeah, so it's coming down here, and that is inserting power. So power should be getting inserted. Um, it's quite possible, though, that maybe we're just using more more than 5,000 redstone flux per tick. If I limit the output to f 5, you're not receiving power. Interesting. If I just disconnected this and not, uh, not noticed when I disconnected it, because of the fact that it's covered by a conduit. I think that's quite likely the case, actually, because I can no longer see where that goes down. I think it might go down here, now that I think about it, actually. Uh, yeah, this is a facade, and so I think what I need to do is uh, this. There we go. Okay, that is now reconnected back up, and that's all working. Okay, perfect. Let me make sure that's not set to 5. We'll set that back to 6,000, just so that it can uh, provide all the machines with all of the juice that they need. That is going to work just fine. And so hopefully, now we should see our uh, Magma Crucible working at a decent speed again. So over here, we're making the Jelly Cryothium. We need to get it from over here, round over to this new fluid transposer that I've built. So we have a fluid transposer here. I basically shimmied everything up by one, which is why the cable got moved there, by the way. So um, here we have the uh, this rich slag production system, same as it was before. And now all that rich slag is going into the fluid transposer. We need to get the jelly cryothium into here, and then we need to cycle the slag that comes from the induction smelters back to where it used to go. So right now, we're inserting on brown here. We don't want to do that. We instead want to insert on brown up at the back of this fluid transposer. So we'll set the back of this to input. We'll do something like this. We'll make sure this doesn't do anything. We'll make sure you insert on brown. So that should start receiving uh, more of the slag from the old systems. And... What we need to do is we need to then just run, I think, a long fluid conduit around to this fluid transposer. There is an alternative, and that alternative is to, is to triple down on integrated dynamics and unlock integrated dynamics fluid transfer, which could be useful. Fluid transfer for integrated dynamics will make it even more powerful too. It does require 8x8 mechanics though. I'm not quite sure how much 8 uh, mechanics we've got at the minute. We've got 54x8. Oh, I think it's going to be worth it, you know. I think um, I think that just going forward, the um, the ability to have wireless fluid transfer is going to be too powerful to, to pass up, right? Much like we've got with wireless item and power transfer currently, I think the wireless fluid transfer is going to be just way too powerful. So in that case, much like we did previously, we can now get a, a fluid interface, and we can throw that down on the magma crucible on this guy so to make that happen we're gonna have to move one of these wrenches and the way that i've set this up is is truly uh, not ideal so let's do this to make sure the redstone keeps getting sent around to the sequential fabricator and then i think what we're gonna have to do is well i guess you the, the trouble with integrated dynamics is you can't have two connectors like you can't export energy and fluids in the same block which is something you can do with uh, with NYO, of course. So let's move this. Let's move this. We're going to have to put down a fluid interface here and we'll set the back side of it. No, the right side to output like that. And we can turn that off. So now I think that should have access to the jelly cryothium. This is fine. This is going to look fine, I think, because we already have cables running up like this. And that is a server crash. All right. So a quick server crash later. Let's try that again. It didn't crash this time, which is good. So I think that should connect there, which is perfect for the fluid. And then for power here, we can just do something like this, and that's all going to be back online. And yeah, I think this is kind of good. I guess the only trouble is that now this doesn't have power, uh, but that's also not a problem because we can just do this, this, and ideally that once we get uh, one more energy conduit. We've got 36 in the system, so boom. And of course, we'll cover a lot of this 
with uh, facades in the future to make sure that you don't see it all. But now, back over all the way here, we should be able to reconnect this. So I might rotate this around just because it's going to be easier to input to the front of this. So what I mean by that is that uh, if we take our wrench and we just kind of rotate that till it faces backwards, we can set the back of this to blue to input. And then if we get a, a fluid exporter, which is this guy, we should be able to drop that down here. And then we need to get a variable card and we need to specify which fluid it is. I do think that for that, I assume the way it works is that we can take a bucket and we can use that to, to specify. So back over here, if I get a bucket of gelid cryothium, which I can do by just right clicking on the magma crucible, I assume then that inside of my portable logic programmer, I can put this in, click fluid, put in gelid cryothium, and then now if I go back over to here, in here, export fluid, gelid cryothium. Nice, look at that, cool. Okay, so the final piece of the puzzle is just getting power to this guy. That is gonna be fine because we do have power right here, like that, good stuff. And yeah, so now we're making cinnabar and that cinnabar is already set to extract on red i'm pretty sure if i uh, shift left click here uh yep it's set to extract on red so that should go around to any induction smelters that have a free slot of course right now it would seem that a lot of them don't have a free slot uh, let me do this and see if i get some cinnabar sent there of course we do need to make sure the bottom here is set to output before any of that's going to work but then we should see the cinnabar being extracted and sent around to the machines nice and that is going to produce for us the uh, the extra resource so now we have effectively managed to get uh, 50 plus 52.5 i think it is x or processing on iron which is pretty nifty stuff we take one iron ore and we get over 50 ores out of it which is very nice indeed uh, obviously slowly but surely this is going to um kind of uh, trickle out to all of the other machines as they run out of regular slag or rich slag they will then start receiving the cinnabar, and then that cinnabar will get turned into rich slag. The rich slag then needs to be sent kind of back to the fluid transposer. So I guess what we should probably do real quick, actually, is probably just take all of the slags out of here, because the, 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 the two systems we currently have are not going to work together. What we need to do is we need to... Um... Oh, no, this is fine, I think, actually. Oh, no, it's not fine. <laughs> it's not fine, because right now we've got this set up here. We need to get rid of this, actually, and uh, we need to just have this set as before to insert on brown because that brown now is going to pull rich slag and send it to here so we'll set you to input and output like that and so now this should work um cinnabar should be sent over there's like a one in four chance that we get rich slag if rich slag is made it then gets sent back to the fluid transposer just in the same way that it used to get sent back to this fluid transposer beforehand and it gets turned into more cinnabar of course the trouble with this in the long run is that we're losing slag and so what we're going to have to do is set up that automated slag production system where we take the uh, the cobblestone and the sand and we process that into unlimited slag, which really shouldn't be a problem, especially because we've got the cobblestone and the sand over here already automated. So it should just be a case of grabbing an induction smelter, which is a case of getting some more invar gears. Perfect. And then let's see if we can just make this work real quick. If we want... The slag to be made. The slag has got to go into this fluid transposer, right? So I, I think it's going to be too tight here to make this work, unfortunately, because we need like multiple uh, inputs, although it's possible we could make this work, you know. We'll set the back to output like that, uh, but we want this output. What's the other product that's made? Let me check that real quick. Cobblestone is what we're looking for. Uh, the cobblestone usage in the induction smelter. Oh, it makes stone bricks. Okay, cool. So yeah, we're definitely going to need more sides here because, although actually, I think if I just rotate this like that, <laughs> this might work. It's a little bit janky, but what we're going to do, we're going to set the left to orange like that. We'll set the top to the output red, and then we'll put another draw right about there. For that, I'm going to have to get another regular one by one draw, and I'm just going to put a, a void upgrade into this so that we're going to have stone bricks available, but we're just going to delete any excess stone bricks that are made once the... Uh, the draw is full. So over here, we'll put this draw down right about there, and that's where the uh, stone bricks are going to go. Then we need this side to be one color, let's say green, and we need this side to be another color, let's say purple, right? And uh, this is where we need to send both sand 
and cobblestone. But again, because we already have them all hooked up to the system, it should just be a case of getting two item exporters, putting one of those down here, another one down here, making sure those are both connected to regular old logic cable, like this and like this, and then using our variable cards here, we can quickly grab one sand and one cobblestone, and then in here, we're gonna go to items, we're gonna go variable card for sand, and variable card for cobblestone. Nice. It doesn't matter where we send these. Uh, this one here can be cobblestone, and this one here can be sand. And then from there, we can do this. We can grab another one of our omnidirectional connectors, drop that down right about here, and that should just work. Of course, the last thing that is obviously the problem now is power. And I guess what we could do actually is we could do this like this and we could use like an item conduit as an intermediary there so that we can extract always active from that, insert up here like that and then that gives us space to squeeze an energy cable in there to give power to this guy and I guess also the magma crucible on the front although that's not strictly necessary and then the only trouble now is just actually getting power to this because we could run it down, but it's going to look a little odd, which I don't love. What we could potentially do, this doesn't use that much power. And so as janky as it is, if I take a capacitor bank and put it here, we could then take an energy exporter and put that down here, connect that up, drop in a blank variable card like that. And now, I think that should work. It totally does. And this can do a max in and out of 500, which is perfect. This is not going to use more than 500. And so, it's very compact, but it works. And so, this is all doing what it is meant to do. We're going to produce the slag. The slag is going to get sent around into this fluid transposer. Obviously, right now, we've got the wrong slag in there. We'll take that out just so that we don't uh, have that same problem in the future. Um, I don't think it's going to be a problem, because now, all of these are producing uh, rich slag, not the uh, immersive engineering slag. Uh, avoid upgrade is required, chat. Yes, thank you for the reminder there. Let me quickly grab one of those and drop that into this drawer here, which shouldn't have cobblestone in it. Um, this should have stone bricks in it. Let me, uh, oh, I see what's happened there. That's um, it's receiving the cobblestone <laughs> from the drawer behind it, which is, uh, is not ideal. There we go. Let me do that and let me uh, lock that as well to make sure that we don't end up with uh, an overflow situation but yeah okay this actually works it's kind of super janky and it is super compact but it does the trick and we have infinite slag being made being turned into rich slag via the lava production here uh, this seems to be having a power problem which is interesting did i not change the i didn't change the amount on this one i broke it and placed it down i see two 800 is the amount there. I, I moved it, it up earlier, and uh, when I did that, I uh, just didn't change the connector value. That's fine. So the rich slag's being made, turned into cinnabar down here with the jelly cryothium. The jelly cryothium is the, the limiting factor now in terms of just speed, and I think that is almost certainly just a problem with the speed of the magma crucible here is uh, is not that fast. That is completely fine. We can make more hardened upgrade kits, so we can put in more augments alongside that hardened upgrade kit to try and make this even faster that is not what i want to do and i don't think you can take those out so let's just quickly make a second one of those and this time ensure that we put it into the right machine there we go and uh, we can do the exact same thing as well with this upgrade kit if we get one more block of redstone boom and boom and while we're at it let's get some uh, augments as well to make sure that this runs as smoothly and quickly as possible we can't go over 500 hours per tick. I mean, we can, but it actually won't do anything um, over 500 hours per tick. So for now, I'll leave that there. And uh, we'll see how that goes. We'll see if that is, is good enough. If it's not, we can always come back and tweak it. And of course, we could always look at uh, using integrated dynamics to send power. If um, if we do run into like a power issue, we could always use um, the other side to send more power to that magma crucible. But yeah, we now have, I believe, automated 50x or processing or 50 plus x or processing. 
And now it's just a case of actually automating the production of those ores, right? So next time we'll come back, I'll probably end up moving this uh, multi-block here, this uh, Infinity Miner, because of course it's in a super janky space, which is not ideal. We'll move this to a new location. Uh, we'll get it hooked up for the iron and the copper. And we can also, of course, uh, get rid of this super janky fluid conduit, and we can replace that with the integrated dynamics wireless fluid. And we'll use that, of course, to get iron and copper sent around. And if we have enough research, which I'm hoping we will, like, I think we've got, they're definitely going to have enough utility. We've actually got 156 now, which is great. Uh, the trouble is, might not be anything, actually. Let me check real quick. What do we need for this? We need 32x64 logistics, which we've got. We need 16x64 mechanics, which we don't have. We only have 7x. Uh, we then need 16x8 production, which we do have. And then we need 32 utility. So we need some more mechanics. Again, that is uh, just a steel problem. The Oh, it's not a steel problem. Hold on. Let me take a look here. What is... Is there a problem, or is it just, um, just backing up? I guess we've just used a bit of it today, I guess, and so it's just, uh, getting there slowly, but surely. Yeah, no, it's working on it, so I don't think it's going to take us too long to get that. Hopefully, next time we'll come back, we will, uh, get both the Tier 1 and Tier 2 Infinity Miners up and running. We'll get all of those all set to the right place so that we don't have to worry about them going forward. We don't have to worry about moving drills for anything but Platinum. And then, once we have that up and running chat, we can finally look into getting into oil and moving on to the next stage via the use of plastic. But those are all problems for future Isaac. For now, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this episode of Feed the Factory there.